Another exciting day for us, uh, welcoming Natalie Achamwa to the Lynx family. Um, you know, uh, Natalie I, uh, knows that I do really, really well with uh, physically and mentally tough players, and, and Natalie is that, and then some. Uh, and then, uh, you know, certainly from a leadership standpoint, um, you know, she's she's one of the best in the league. And so there's a lot of intangibles uh, to, to Natalie uh, that were very, very appealing to us um, as in terms of um, you know, our championship culture, those are, those are things that we try to cultivate and she has those things very, very naturally. Uh, and then certainly on the basketball side of it, you know, everybody knows, uh, that, that we like bigs that can have the ball in their hands and, and, and make decisions. And, and, um, you know, I remember back in, in, uh, 2014, we were, uh, kind of doing our really hoping that, that Natalie would fall, uh, to us. And she, she got, you know, she had an injury in college and almost got there, but not quite, uh, and ever since then, we've been, we've been, we've been hoping uh, that there might be a day that she could be a Minnesota Lynx, and here we are. Awesome. Go ahead, Natalie. Well, first of all, I am so excited to now officially be a part of the Minnesota Lynx. Uh, when I was going through this whole process of free agency, it was my first real free agency, um, being unrestricted. And I knew that if I was going to leave Indiana, I needed to go somewhere that was the perfect fit. And there was no question in my mind. Of course, I had to play the little free agency game a little bit with Coach Reeve. But <laughs> <laughs> there was no doubt in my mind that Minnesota was going to be the place for me. Um, from fit, like Coach Reeve said, on the court uh, to off the court, what they do in the community, uh, how proud and how passionate they are as an organization. Um, in supporting their players in on and off court endeavors was huge for me. Um, so I'm very excited to wear a Minnesota Lynx jersey this summer, uh, keep my number 11 and uh, do big things. Uh, Minnesota is a place that you feel it when you play in the arena, you feel the fans. Um, unfortunately, I was on the other side of that in a championship run, <laughs> but I'm glad that I'm on the other side now uh, to be a part of an organization that has a legacy for winning. Um, I'm excited and can't ready, can't wait to uh, start this summer where I can um, really compete. Um, I can bring that leadership, that tenacity, um, that grit that I play with to a already tremendous team um, and do what I can to bring that fifth championship to back to Minnesota. Thank you both so much. We'll get started with questions. Um, if you have a question, please go ahead and raise your hand in the virtual feature on Zoom, and I will call to I will call on you. We'll get started with Kent, and then we'll go to Jace, and then Cody. Kent, go ahead. Hey, Natalie, Kent Youngwood from the Star Tribune here in Minneapolis. Um, on the court specifically, what 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 do you see your role with the Lynx being? I've always loved uh, the parallel to um, when someone says you're a five and a with a one's mind. Um, I love to share the ball. I love to see a play ahead. Um, I love to make a pass or set a great screen. Um, I think a lot of the stuff that I do well doesn't necessarily come up on the stat sheet. And um, that's something that I can't wait to um, help and add to the links um, is being that person on offense that can distribute, that can share the ball, that can get Collier that back door pass or get that high low to sill. Um, and then on defense, once again, I'm really excited to not have to guard sill now. I mean, in practice, <laughs> but in games, I'm glad that uh, I don't have to guard her anymore. Um, but taking charges, being gritty um, and doing what I can to get us an extra possession. Please go ahead. A question for Cheryl, um, having the type of front court depth that you do now, how much of a luxury is that? Um, and, you know, especially Sill, does this help with like minutes management if she might need it at any point in the season or you might want to make sure she's as fresh as possible at the end to have as skilled of front court options as you have now? Yeah, but before I answer that, I want to make sure that the last sound bite from Natalie Achan was one that you all uh, heard uh, and can process um, in that. It, it's it's the reason uh, why Natalie was so appealing to us because she's talking about winning possessions and you know I, I know I bore the heck out of uh, Kent Youngblood in particular to talk about those very simple silly basic things like winning a possession uh, but but Natalie uh, gets it and and so um, again that soundbite that, that that's the epitome of why this is a perfect match uh, the front court depth was uh, a, a target for us. 
Um, anybody that that, that kind of uh, has been around our team the last couple of seasons, uh, we're really, really good, um, you know, in, in, in uh, you know, Demir Stantis and her development, and obviously Sylvia Fowles, the best center in the league, uh, the best, best center of all time. Um, but we need, we're at this place where we need greater balance. One, Sill's not going to play forever. Uh, and two, you know, um, both Demir's and Sill uh, have sustained um, injuries in the last two seasons. And uh, it's been problematic for us. And so, you know, we really felt like, um, you know, bolstering that gives us our best chance to position ourselves to be a contender. Uh, so that was a big time target for us. And I, as I told Natalie, the list for us, uh, uh, for this uh, position that we wanted to fill was a list of one. We wanted Natalie Achami and that if Natalie did not become a Lynx, there was no one else that we wanted. Um, and that was not just a free agency pitch. That's fact. <laughs> All right. We'll go to Cody and then Don Mitchell. Cody, go ahead. Sorry, I was unmuting. Uh, obviously, you're reuniting with with Kayla. So, what was the order of events? Did she did she commit to the links first and call you and pitch you, or or was it vice versa, or was it just the master plan all along to end up uh, playing together again? It was honestly God's plan because we didn't really even have communication during the process while we were both being pitched or wanting to go to the link. So it was actually like a, once the decision was made, then we connected and it was just, it was meant to be. Um, the reuniting of me and K-Mac, I mean, we're the same class at Notre Dame. We have grinded through a lot together. We have been through a lot together. And one thing that we both uh, are embedded, that's embedded in us is our competitive spirit. So I'm glad that we will be on the same team once again and um, be able to compete with each other. Don Mitchell, go ahead. Uh, welcome, Natalie, to Minnesota, first of all. Uh, second of all, um, the word rebuild, people want to throw around for the links. But when you look at the roster, and I know Kayla was talking about this yesterday, she wants a championship this year. It's not really a rebuild roster. When you look at other names on the roster, you mentioned Sill, you have K-Mac. What do you see? There's no such thing as rebuild in Minnesota. <laughs> I mean, even last year in what they were able to do in the bubble, um, that is a big piece of why I wanted to come to Minnesota is because I want to win. Um, I would love a championship. I haven't had one in America. Um, so, <laughs> I mean, I've had one overseas. I've had some with Canada, um, but I would love to uh, really bring that home and win a championship in the WNBA. And that is a now thing. Um, you see the talent and skill and competitive nature and heart that is already established in the team adding pieces like me and k-mac are just adding that depth like coach reed talked about and is making sure that everyone on our roster can compete and start and do everything in their ability at any time um and i think that's what a true championship team is is when you don't have drop off um and i'm excited to, to see how and where i could fit in and where i can improve um our team our next question will be from Charles Hallman. Charles, go ahead. Congratulations, Charles Hallman, Minnesota Spokes Reporter. I have a non-basketball question for you, Natalie, then a basketball question for Cheryl. Uh, you're coming to an area that was the epicenter center of racial change last summer, unfortunately, and, but you're coming to an organization that's been a promoter of social and racial change for many years before that. How do you feel you'll be fitting in in that aspect in terms of being a part of that. That was a big piece in my decision um, was making sure that I was committing to an organization that did more than put a ball in a hoop that stood for more than just being basketball players, because that is something that I am about and I have always been about. And um, Coach Reeves and I talked, spoke about this on the phone um, about back in 2015, about when the Lynx took a stand and about how how they've taken a stand the entire time. And this is nothing that's new to the Minnesota Lynx. Um, I'm just adding and hopefully can use my individual platform to amplify that. Uh, I am one that really embeds myself in a community that I live in. So I can't wait to get into Minnesota and see where I can help, where I can make Minnesota home and how I can help improve the community that will be, now be my home. Thank you. And for Cheryl, what little thing that has not been talked about, Natalie, that you like us to know about? What was what little thing about Natalie? Did you say that hasn't been talked about that, that you like well, us to know about? Well, first, um, Grandpa Charles, uh, how's the baby? 
Go on, walking now. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, what, uh, you know, probably not, maybe it goes without saying, I think when you watch Natalie play, um, but when I, uh, sort of do our, our homework and, you know, I know what I see, but it's different when other people coach. And, and so, um, everyone that I spoke to, uh, first talked about like, and it's not just like, she's a pretty smart player. The reaction is she's the smartest player I've ever been around. Uh, you know, Kayla, um, uh, you know, told me that. Uh, Coach McGraw talked about immediately first reaction and um, she sees things before everybody else. Um, and that that instinct, that 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 natural ability, uh, you can see that it, it makes a lot of sense. And, and uh, you know, that that would be a thing. Um, probably the other thing is uh, how much she got under skins uh, under Sill's skin, um, that that would be, you know, something that I know Sill's excited not to not to have to go against Natalie either, because Natalie mentioned taking charges and she'd slide under Syl and Syl would try to pivot and turn and power up and Natalie would fall down and Syl's got two fouls in the first quarter and she's pissed and yeah, so that that's probably uh, one, one subtle thing. I mean, when you're, when you're undersized, you gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> and at that time I needed Syl out of the game. So now hopefully I can keep her in there and then help take some of that off of her. There's that smarts coming through. <laughs> Congratulations to both of you. Thank you. Thanks, Charles. All righty. Our next question will be from Christina. Christina, go ahead. Hey, Nat. Good afternoon. Congrats on signing with Minnesota. It's good to see you. Um, my question for you, I guess, is what was that exit conversation like with Catch? Um, I know that a few players also are not going back to Indiana. So what was that uh, exit conversation like? Um, our conversation more went to our relationship because Catch and I were friends. We were teammates before she took this role on. So it was important for both of us to be able to connect and um, have a conversation about what mattered. And that was making sure that we were okay after all of this is done. Cause at the end of the day, it is business. I am a unrestricted free agent. And like I said, it took a lot of um, reflection on my end to figure out what exactly I was looking for to leave Indiana. I've lived in Indiana the past decade. So it was not a decision that I took lightly. And um, I expressed that to Tamika. And um, I'm just glad that we both took the time and understood that it, it's bigger than basketball. It's bigger than a franchise. It's bigger than a team um, that our relationship uh, will continue and that I can always lean on her. So. And can I just follow that up? Um, how do you see yourself as a leader on this team? I'm not sure if someone had already asked you that, but how do you see yourself um, in a leadership role on this team? Well, actually, one of the questions that I actually asked Coach Reeve, I'll maybe not verbatim, but I asked her, I've heard so, so many things about how nice everyone and how great of a person everyone is. And mind you, I'm a nice person, but I can come off harsh and I come off blunt sometimes. So that was my question on how can I lead? How can I be receptive? How can I embed myself in a team that one of their biggest strengths is their cohesiveness? And um, it was Coach Reeve that said, I think the team is looking for that. They're, they want that. Um, they're hungry for that. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be me. Um, I'm going to take the time at first to get to know and get to learn my teammates and how they um, take leadership, how they take communication um, so that I can be as effective as I can. And um, I, I have the experience. Um, I've played at the highest level since I was 16 and I was on the Olympic team. So um, I think my body of work can speak um, for itself. And uh, hopefully that can be a relationship that we can develop um, and a respect that we can develop that um, I can both give and take um, because we have some great um, leaders already on the Minnesota team. Can I just have one more question? Uh, <laughs> Black History Month. Sorry, guys. I'm sorry to swallow. Third follow up. <laughs> Black History Month. Obviously, um, talk about um, what it means to you to be a Black female athlete. Uh, when I think of uh, being a Black female athlete, uh, I think about the the power that lies behind that. Um, in one that I get a platform um, that is special to me, that is unique to me. Um, and second is that when I take off the jersey, um, I am a black woman and I have to make sure that I am comfortable in everything that I'm saying, everything I'm doing, um, because I go beyond being just a basketball player. 
Um, so thinking about Black History Month and what it means to have this space and have the opportunity that people before me didn't, that didn't get the mic, didn't get the platform. And how can I continue to push that forward? How can I continue to um, pass it on to the next generation? Um, and second of all, it, it makes me think of NECA, the Um uh, And someone that is a leader in our Players Association, someone that is um, a, a strong, confident Black woman um, that is able to to be the voice of this group, of this um, this league and this WNBA. And that's a lot, but <laughs> a lot of emotions, a lot of feelings when it comes to that. But um, to end it off, I guess I'd just say that um, Black history should be celebrated every day of the year and not just in February. Thank you so much, Nat. Best of luck in Minnesota. Thank you. All right, we'll circle back around to Kent and then Jace. If you have another question, please raise your hand and I will get back to you. Kent, go ahead. Yeah, you kind of alluded to this a little bit, and Kayla talked about it yesterday, about how in the in the bubble last summer, you kind of got a she kind of got a really good look at how different teams operated and how they kind of acted and interacted with each other, and it gave her insight into kind of what the links were about. You know, and then they went out and made the semifinals without still being healthy. I mean, did you kind of have that impression too when you were watching inside the bubble, seeing how they were going about their business? Was that part of the part of your decision? Yeah. yeah. And I'm going to talk about uh, just a specific, on top of what K Mac already said, uh, that was evident on the court. I mean, how they were able to power through, how they were able to to fight and have the tenacity no matter what. But there was a moment um, in the bubble. I don't know if anyone told you this, but the locker rooms were just basically <laughs> fake, fake walls, okay? And there's no roofs and no rooms. And I remember we were in the gym. <laughs> so <true. laughs> but, uh, in the gym ready getting ready for the next game and it was halftime of the minnesota game and coach Reeve wasn't too happy about what was going on in the game and for me like everyone's kind of just listening to noise and like oh no my gosh coach Reeve is mad but i actually was sitting in the locker room and i sat there and i listened to what she was saying and in my head i was like Get it, Coach Reeve, <laughs> because what she was saying, she was trying to light a fire under her team and the passion that she spoke with and how demanding she was of her players. That resonated me with me in free agency when I'm thinking of a coach that won't let you give up on a play, won't let you quit a play, that wants to win every possession, that wants to demand the most out of their players. And for me, um, that was something that was motivating. Um, and then couple it with Coach Reeve telling me how it can fit into her thought process and into her philosophy of how she plays. I mean, that just gave me the most, like, is it May yet? Like, are we here yet? <laughs> I want to play. Um, because knowing you have a coach a franchise that believes in you, but also coupled with that they demand the best out of you, um, for me was, I mean, the perfect fit. Okay, we'll go Jace and then end with Don Mitchell. Jace, go ahead. For Natalie and Cheryl, Natalie, you talked about you know your skill set and wanting to be someone who distributes throughout the offense. And with the way that this team has used its bigs in the past, do both you and Coach anticipate maybe your assist numbers even ticking up um, a bit more as you come to Minnesota? I would love that. <laughs> I would love those assist numbers to go up. Um, because that means I'm doing my job well. And... Um, that means we're finishing plays. Um, I've always been a player that uh, likes to be involved, but doesn't have to finish the play, doesn't have to start the play. Um, and whether that is with assists in a pass, but um, I love screen assists. I love to set a great screen and get a great shot open. Um, so some of it you might not see on the stat sheet and come up in the assist um, column, but uh, I will really work to, to get the shots that are best for our offense. Yeah, I mean, it's all about easy baskets. And, and when you have someone like like Natalie, who sometimes understands the MVP of a possession is keeping the ball moving, uh, or, or like she said, setting a great screen so you have enough time to do what you need to do to get a quality shot. If the screen isn't good, if there's not a, attention to detail on an angle or timing, uh, then the shot quality uh, is going to go down. And um, you know, I likened uh, Natalie to Taj McWilliams Franklin, uh, who who was in our franchise uh, for our first championship, and and. Uh, not only the hold your teammates accountable uh, part of it, you know, uh, we need that. Coaches need that. We need players on the floor uh, to be our voices or in the locker room. And Natalie will do that. But then also Taj had this element of same thing, not caring 
if you ran a play for her, it wasn't about that. You know, it was about a team's possession and what they could do in that. Uh, and the number of times that a great screen leads to a great possession, uh, it's a lost art. And that's something Natalie really enjoys doing. And then certainly passing. Uh, Nafisa Collier is one of the greatest cutters that we have in the game. Um, and so, you know, I felt like we needed to have someone that, that would be able to uh, get her easy baskets. You know, there weren't a lot of easy baskets in, in 2020. Um, you know, in, in 2019, maybe a little easier just because she was a rookie and people didn't know much about her. Um, and, and, you know, we got her uh, in some easier situations. But now she needs to be able to score in a variety of ways. And, and uh, Natalie's going to be a big part of that. Okay, we'll go last question to Don Mitchell. Don, go ahead. Uh, this question is for both, but Natalie, if we could start with you. This is piggybacking of what we're talking about. When you hear a coach and you said you loved what Cheryl was saying and being aggressive and, and, and being outspoken, but Cheryl also allows her players to be that way. Sometimes you don't get that two-way street. And I'm not just talking on the court. I'm talking about as a person, you know, in the public. Uh, sometimes women, it's all right to be aggressive on the court, but when you get off the court, you know, uh, sometimes that's not allowed. But Cheryl walks the walk. How important is that? That's a, that's a freedom that many people don't get. Exactly. Um, I'm a person that speaks my mind and I'm a person that uh, will be up front. And that is something that uh, Coach Reeve and I knocked it out of the park on our first conversation. I mean, our first call, um, this free agency, uh, <laughs> we were on the phone for a while. Then we got back on Zoom and we were talking um, for hours that day. So. For me, um, it was uh, important in my decision. Uh, people, people matter. How people make you feel, how you connect with people, how people um, support you matters. Um, relationships will make or break how you feel about a situation, how you feel about an organization. So I knew uh, the quality of person that Coach Reeve was and her staff is. And I mean, I spoke from front, out, front office staff to players, to coaches. I really connected and had the chance to talk to everybody. and. Um, that matters. Um, so I'm really excited to be able to uh, learn from Coach Reeve as well, um, because I find the similarities in our personalities, and and I do want to coach eventually when I retire. So um, it's it's a win-win on so many levels for me.